In this week's lecture, we talked about the social information processing model. The social information processing model is a cognitive model. Prior to this point, uh, we talked about the most useful model we talked about was the reinforcement model. And the reinforcement model has no sense of people thinking or having thoughts. The, the person is completely responsive to the consequences that are available to them in their environment. Consequence environments can be quite complex and they can uh, result in very complex patterns of behavior. But we're we're certain, at least if for no other reason from our personal experience, than that uh, conscious thought happens and conscious thought matters in, in how people behave. And the assumption of the social information uh, processing model and how it characterizes people is in its intelligent sense makers. Uh, the notion is that people, especially in the workplace, in their social lives, they're interested in understanding why things happen the way they do. They want to be able to predict, have some sense of predictability about uh, their jobs, what's going on in their work life, how what demands are going to be made on them, uh, what rewards are available to them if they do a good job, are all things that uh, they're developing explanations for, they're trying to, to make sense of. Uh, one of the topics of great conversation is usually the boss and understanding the boss. And we're coming up and trying to make sense of how the boss behaves, how the boss is likely to behave. Uh, these are all matters of conversation, and they're, they're in every part of our life. We talk to our uh, most significant others, we talk to friends and family about things in our workplace, and always trying to make sense of or explain or this is how things work and these are causal explanation. And uh, the way that people go about this has some systematic characteristics that is of great importance that we understand as leaders in organization. So the social information processing model starts with and why information is in there with how, with, um, how people use information how they use information to make judgments of what it is they can observe. Uh, it notes that what people can observe are the same things that exist in the reinforcement model, situation, behaviors, and consequences. We cannot observe what is going on inside people's heads. And so based on uh, our prior beliefs and expectations, or maybe our exposure to people, we use this information on situations, behaviors, and consequences to, to make judgment about uh, the why of events and situations that we've observed and try and, and predict how people are going to act in uh, the current situation and how they're going to act in the future. Uh, because of the enormous amounts of information available to us, we have to be selective. We have to pick information out to attend to. And it's the only way we can possibly manage all the things that we might look at. And one of the most important ways, and why it's the social information processing model, one of the most important ways we select out and understand what to pay attention to is what other people tell us. Other people make salient to us. They share stories with us. They, they will make statements like, have you ever noticed, right? That is a salience, and it's making us pay attention to certain types of information, maybe certain explanations of information. But how we understand uh, you know, situations, especially like our workplace, is very much a function of how we interact socially in that workplace and the information that we get from other people. Um, we also talked about, and this is an important feature of the social information processing model, that our prior beliefs matter quite a bit, and our prior beliefs matter because they cause us to select certain information as relevant or not. We call this the expectation bias. We see what we expect to see. Uh, we filter out things that are unexpected to us. And in this sense, our prior beliefs are can be self-reinforcing. We find confirming information. This is the kind of effect we talk about when we say first impressions matter. First impressions matter because they're an initial belief and people start selecting information that matches those beliefs. It reinforces the initial belief. And uh, this is common in how people view information. It's also a component of why um, the amount of uh, trust people have, 
the credibility that they uh, bestow upon us is so important in their listening uh, behavior. And we are going to continue developing the social information processing model, its implications and application uh, in the next module when we move into communication and commitment processes. One of the uh, judgment processes that we spent particular time on was the attribution process. Attribution works with situation, behaviors, and consequences, things we can observe. Based on the configuration of those things, uh, we make judgments about other people, and we were likewise judged. And one of the big important points we made when we talk about these judgment processes is it's important, is import, it is as important that we understand we're objects of judgments as it is we're making judgments. And this is in the category of life's not fair. In these judgment processes, uh, we've got to be better at it than other people. And better at it means we've got to make more informed judgments in judging others. And in being better at it than other people means that we have to be better at providing information, making salient and providing illustration and explanation to other people so that we hope that their judgments are equally informed. The social information processing model um, these things that we call in experiences, beliefs, and attitudes are uh, summaries of experience, and they're changeable with new experiences, how people adapt to new situations. And if they're well established, they don't change rapidly, and it takes a lot of information to change them, uh, but they are subject to change. We know for certain that one point in time when they're most malleable is when people are new to organizations. Uh, they're anxious to both make a good impression and to figure out how things work. Uh, the beliefs that they have are incomplete and only partially formed. And so these are uh, can be opportunities when people are new to influence them, to provide information. kind of. And this is where we start talking about the onboarding process and when the socialization experience, which are major topics for us in the next uh, few weeks. We'll be looking at those in some detail. On the uh, further reading, I put down, this is um, uh, a great movie with Jack Nicholson, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. It's, it's probably a, a better novel. It's one of the really great pieces of uh, work of uh, 20th century literature, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And it is the perspective of a mental hospital as told by an inmate. And uh, you, you get kind of an amazing altered reality about the perception and how things uh, look and how sense is made through this, this novel treatment. It, it's at times incredibly funny and at times you know, very, very sad, but uh, always, always interesting. Um, more recent book, uh, Mac Bazerman and Anton Brunsell's Blind Spots, uh, is about um, basically ethical transgressions, mostly focused on the accounting industry, but in professional organizations. And it has a very large component of how people are gathering information, how they make sense of, and, and, and in their case, how they justify, ultimately, behavior that can be illegal. And so it's, it's a really interesting study of ethics because it doesn't treat ethics as a moral failing. It treats it as as people um, failing as information processors, ultimately to the point of moral failing. They're doing things that are inexcusable, but it gives us a better understanding of how they rationalize and justify these, how as they're embedded in these situations and the social information they get influences them and, and supports them in, in making bad judgments on the edge, slippery slope, and eventually falling into unethical practice. And this is something that is uh, relevant as we continue to talk about um, <clears throat> social information processing model, especially incremental commitment. You'll see that in incremental commitment, there's this notion of taking a first step that's very small, and you can, again, eventually 
fall into a slippery slope. And it's something we'll talk a little bit more about. So that's a wrap up of our coverage of the social information processing model. You definitely want to pay attention to the handout distributed in class. Go over that. In two pages, it tells you pretty much everything you need to know about that model. And that model is going to be central to everything that we study in the remainder of the course.